sometimes I wonder, how does a game like Nitro Family get made? Like, what are the chances? How much of a butterfly effect does there need to be for a small developer in South Korea with no other credits to its name to just decide one day to talk to a studio in Croatia and license their game engine to use it in a saucy chank fest about an action hero who carries his wife on his back and tries to rescue his son from a drug ward, while music licensed from an obscure New Zealand band blasts your ears. Funny enough, that's probably not even the strangest application of the Sirius engine, since it was also used in a couple of other games, including MMORPGs of all things. In fact, Delphi Eye Entertainment also had plans for a game with massive multiplayer elements. Not much is known about this project, or even the company itself, but they certainly had ambition. They had two development teams at work, one making Nitro Family and another making an MMORPG called Helikia 2, and they even had plans for a Nitro Family Online that would feature large-scale multiplier. But in the end, these were cancelled presumably after slamming headfirst into financial issues. Still, Nitro Family, the single-player FPS, did see the light of day in 2004, with some help from THQ's bottom-of-the-barrel subsidiary, ValueSoft. Nitro Family is the story of Victor Chopsky, a certified hunk of a man who carries his wife Maria on his back and has a kid named Red Chief. The tribulations begin when one day the Golden Bell Corporation kidnaps his son for reasons unknown. But it probably isn't for a good one. Golden Bell once created a drug called Healthy Family, which was supposed to bring happiness to all the depressed people in the world. It instead turned all who consumed it into brainless, politically incorrect stereotypes. Golden Bell is now producing a new and improved healthy family formula with none of the side effects, but they need test subjects, and Victor's kid happened to be the perfect one. Bad move, asshole. Victor grabs his guns, gets Maria on his back, and then chases after the party fan that took Red Chief putting him on a warpath against Golden Bell and its CEO, some dingus with a really bad accent and a very punchable face. Look, the plot is stupid, but so is everything else here. It's a game from 2004 that looks like it came out in 2000 and employs the design sensibilities of an NES platformer from 1988. The game sells itself as a new breed FPS where you don't shoot alone, but depending on how literally you interpret that catchphrase, it's not entirely correct. After all, Maria doesn't actually shoot. She whips, boy. That said, aside from the so-called combo weapon and the fact that Maria does her own thing, there really isn't all that much that can be described as new when it comes to gameplay, even if the game tries to be otherwise. It's an arcadey shooter without the modern concessions of iron sights and accuracy mechanics. A shooter where you can carry your entire arsenal at once and where ammo is plentiful. I love crates! Where Nitro Family manages to stand out to some degree is in its tone and style. It's packing action hero character designs, comic book artwork on the menus, and those cool little animations on the status bar. The soundtrack is also composed of licensed music, primarily some high-energy punk and rock music, and it will get those damn earworms into your head one way or another, whether it be from how catchy the lyrics are, or from how much it will make you want to gouge your ears, due to all the time you spend listening to each track on repeat. 
A shame that the actual models and environments look pretty crummy. Really nails the low-budget vibes while trying to sell itself on sex appeal and shock value. The story is told through these smelly cutscenes, with the same animations awkwardly looping over and over, and the levels are frequently composed of giant areas that extend for miles with nary a detail scattered throughout. To be fair, the devs weren't doing so good financially, which might explain a lot. Stuff like the silly looking Vima scenes with the textures stretched to the breaking point, or the disfigured Slenderman with miniguns. And look at these destructible objects that have a one second delay before they actually explode. The absolute Xoge vibes. An interview mentions that they licensed the series Sension specifically because they loved the bright outdoor environments from the series Sam games. If the developers had just pushed harder for stylized visuals in the vein of the menu artwork, it would probably have hidden some of the technical faults and meshed much better with the low poly models. Instead, you have these realistically detailed textures that look drab and don't display the comic book flair that the game tries to go for. Budget issue? Technical issue? Whatever the case, it's a wasted opportunity. Then again, maybe I'm thinking too much and this game is just one big shitpost. Or at least a misguided attempt at a parody. This is the same game that displays that old FBI winners don't use drugs advert when you grab a healthy family pickup, seconds before transforming enemies into near naked people. The shop also has these play tips that generally seem perfectly sensible, but then you have ones that make me roll my popcorn. Don't show off your new clothes and shoes too loudly to your friends. If you feel dizzy or nauseous during gameplay, take a rest. Or visit your favorite adult site. Yeah, let me just browse Cornhub for a moment. Though there's definitely some creep factor going on. You have these fat drunkards with atomic puke that chases the player, which is dumb but appropriately silly. And then you have these same fat drunkards glued to the ceiling that explode into a group of snakes when you approach. Hey devs, I know it's a bit too late to ask, but... You guys okay over there? The credits roll is also a fully playable section where Victor takes a flower to Maria, which is just the most wholesome thing. Or at least it would be, if it wasn't for the fact that you can cheat on your wife if you collect 20 golden cards. You let your wife ride on the back, but the warmongering quirk lady can ride on top? Yikes, Victor. That's a big L, my friend. Come on. Nitro Family's gameplay is pretty straightforward for the most part, with pickups scattered throughout the levels, hordes of enemies and some exaggerated physics that cause them to fly all over. A lot of the playtime will be spent traveling on foot throughout some very long maps, but this is interspersed with the occasional gimmick section. Boss battles also exist and are definitely a thing. The majority doesn't require anything besides shooting them until they die, and the rest isn't overly complicated. You just need to watch out for some of the bollocks, like hit scan attacks with no cover in sight, or super fast attacks that you can't realistically avoid. Some bosses also have random moments of invincibility, which is always fun. So what does that not shooting alone part mean exactly? Well, the game does have cooperative multiplayer, as well as that sad green logo. It all comes back to it. But the important part is that Maria is always there to guide you, and she doubles as a melee attack by automatically whipping enemies that get too close, frequently leaving grunts without a head. 
She also reloads your weapons when you switch them out. And you can find hydrogen cans that allow Maria to carpet bomb the area in front of you in a seriously bombastic manner. The exaggerated physics do have a purpose too, even if the player likely won't bother engaging with it. You can score extra points by juggling enemies in the air using your weapons, but it's never required aside from a handful of sections where you have to juggle enemies into the right place to open the way forward. Juggling enemies, or simply getting shot repeatedly, will also build up the ecstasy gauge. When all three fill up, the game enters slow motion and play some classical music for good measure. The main star of Nitro Family's arsenal is the combo weapon, which is technically three different weapons that you dual wield and can freely combine as you want. This allows you to mix and match each one's strengths and weaknesses, and adapt to the enemies you're currently facing. The shotguns are powerful but lack range, the machine guns drown your target in bullets, and the rocket launchers are slow but can blow your fellow humans into little chunks. Each one needs to be reloaded individually, so theoretically you can employ tactics like reloading one of them while the other is firing. But that goes out the window after you notice that switching weapons is always faster than reloading. Killing enemies earns you credits, and the three combo weapons can be upgraded to deal more damage and hold more rounds by talking to Lisa the Homewrecker. As you progress, she will also start selling the rest of the arsenal. Four separate weapons that aren't as prevalent as the combo weapon, but complement it with extra utility. The first unlock is the grenade launcher, which launches grenades that explode on contact or alternatively can be detonated remotely. The second one is the push gun, a curious weapon that doesn't deal much damage directly but pushes back enemies. Some stages do include bottomless pits and other environmental traps, so the push gun does have a unique purpose. Next is the sniper rifle, which holds no surprises. High damage, perfect accuracy and a scope to zoom way into the distance. And no, it doesn't deal extra damage when using the scope. Finally, you have the Nitro Missile, an ammo-starved but extremely powerful gun that deals tons of damage and has a very large area of effect. Here's a play tip for you. Don't fire it indoors. On paper, Nitro Family has all the elements necessary to become a cult classic. It's crazy, it's fast, and in short bursts it certainly can be pretty fun. Unpolished and ugly as sin, but pretty fun. Its core mechanics are perfectly surfaceable, but when it goes off the beaten path there's a chance that it's going to end up very poorly, and at its worst moments it easily deserves its bottom of the barrel status over on the discount bin. Damn, what a twist. I could sit here and complain about turret sections for the hundredth time, but there are more pressing annoyances here, like how the machine guns have this weird soft walk-on system. It's like you have to walk onto enemies for your bullets to register, which can make aiming with them a crapshoot on rare occasion. Due to the massive map sizes and the comparatively short few distance, you can have situations where items and enemies aren't visible until you get closer. Not all of them, but one example is the bikers with rocket launchers, where you can see the rockets but you can't see the enemy itself. The design of the maps themselves is also a frequent issue, being overly long and underly interesting. 
you'll see a lot of repeating sections or one section that is extended far beyond its enjoyment. This entire jungle section, for example, is about one hour long. Nitro Family is one of those games that somehow manages to make 20 minutes feel like an entire hour due to the constant repetition and the same background music looping over and over. Like I said, those earworms will get in your head, one way or another. For most of the game, the exaggerated physics work in the game's favor, but they become a stumbling block on a handful of parts where you have to juggle enemies into a certain place. And this is where upgrading weapons actually becomes counterintuitive. The rocket launchers are too imprecise, the machine guns provide too little push, and the level 3 shotguns are powerful enough to kill even the bulkier enemies before you can juggle them into the target location, turning a silly 30 second gimmick into 20 minutes of frustration. And in the last stretch, the physics straight up become the anti-fun mechanic, as the game deploys enemies with weapons that can juggle the player in the same way. This could have provided some wacky fun, where the player is hopping all over the place, kind of like the graffiti rooms in Serious Sam. In practice, this is where Nitro Family goes off the rails and culminates in the Rui Palace, which doesn't just jump the shark. No, it dumps it into a rocket and flies it to the moon, where it now plays among the stars. This place is both massive and massively copy-pasted, with the same couple of corridors repeating over and over while you're being pounded in seconds the moment you step anywhere. Some sections are practically unplayable, spawning enemies all around you and melting your health and armor while you're helpless to do anything because the screen is having a seizure. It also teaches you just how useless the ecstasy mechanic is, because it isn't true bullet time, so you're still going to get hit by the hit scanners. Still, if you're interested in trying it out for yourself, well, it's not available digitally, so you'll have to track down a copy yourself. The game isn't hard to get up and running, but it will require some tweaking for optimal results. It runs natively on DirectX 8, so if you can't get VSync working properly, you might want to use something like Crosshire's DirectX 9 wrapper. Better widescreen support and FOV changing requires some file editing, but the PC Gaming Wiki article has links to prepackaged files that you can just drop into the game's folder. The sniper rifle overrides the FOV, but that's a minor issue. Now, would I actually recommend playing it in the first place? I mean, the first hour is perfectly fine, but beyond that, the game's issues become increasingly apparent. Still, the developers had a vision for what they wanted to accomplish, so while the end result is pretty mediocre at best and not even playtested at worst, there is merit to its ideas. This game has attitude in spades. It overflows with chaotic energies. So what exactly happened to Delphi? I? I'm afraid I don't know the answer beyond they ran out of cash and went bankrupt, and had to shut down just a couple of months after Nitro Family was released. Plans for an Xbox port of the game were also made, but that never materialized. Supposedly, Delphi I was bought out by Webzen, a South Korean company that develops and publishes MMO games. Though according to Moby Games, most of the staff only has Nitro Family to their credit. The lead programmer went on to work at other development studios as a software engineer before pivoting to robotics, while the rest either have one or two other games or nothing else. 
I'm going to assume that it was simply a tale of a hopeful new developer trying to break into the industry, but lacking the resources and the experience necessary to score. While Valuesoft might have helped them get the game on shelves, you have to remember that they are all about low-budget products, and likely didn't actually provide much assistance with the development. And that's a shame. Nitro Family might have gone down with the reputation for being kind of terrible, and that reputation is mostly deserved. But damn, if it isn't one radical-ass game.